Bradley Metrock, CEO of Project Voice. This week in Voice Daily for Thursday, February the 17th. We're going to be talking about voice and AI in the metaverse, um, which is going to require us to talk about what is the metaverse. But before we get to that, uh, let's talk about DeepGram, who's a sponsor of this video and all of the This Week in Voice Daily videos through the middle of the year. DeepGram is the leader in automated transcription and speech-to-text for conversational AI, sales and support enablement, voice analytics, or any use case that requires super accurate, usable transcriptions, thanks to them. So I'm gonna be reacting first to a BBC video talking about what the metaverse is. I thought this was a good way to sort of set up the conversation. Um, and then we'll talk about the role voice and AI may play in the metaverse. Let's roll the video. What actually is the metaverse? Well, if we think of the internet as something that we look at, the metaverse is a version of the internet that we're inside. The idea is that we will experience the metaverse as an avatar, a virtual version of ourselves that we control as we explore this new online frontier. But what will we actually do? Okay, so, Boz, here we are in what might be considered a representation of, of, of what the metaverse could be. Yeah, for us, the metaverse is a spatial construct as opposed to the previous web, which was really a very linear kind of 2D flat thing. Uh, we want this one to be immersive. Now, of course, it doesn't mean it has to be virtual reality. Uh, it could also just be on a phone or on a desktop computer. You might have noticed that we're using the tools of the metaverse to create a good portion of this item. My avatar has been created by a couple of companies, Ready Player Me and Oz. They already create tools for people to make avatars from a photo. It's this virtual version of Oz which will travel between online experiences in any metaverse. And then over time, what I'm most excited about is an economy there. Uh, and I mean, you know, economy not just of digital goods, sure, and entertainment, that's great, but also services um, in, in, a, in an immersive environment. I'm going to have an avatar. I'm going to need a stylist. I'm going to have a, a, a home space. Microsoft has adapted its workplace meeting software Teams for the metaverse by creating a system called Mesh. It's designed to work with a variety of different devices, including virtual and augmented reality. AR, as it's known, projects graphics on top of the real world using headsets like Microsoft's HoloLens or mobile phones. There's quite a few people that have got fatigued by having to have video chat meetings and things of that nature, and that they realize they now crave human contact. Human communication is about 5% speech, is about 95% everything else. I've been in my, in my you know, living room with the entire team around the table, right? Making eye contact, uh, where the, all the gestures are coming into the right place. So it changes completely the, the you know, call it the screen fatigue we're feeling today. The next piece of the metaverse puzzle isn't just about seeing these virtual worlds, but feeling them as well. Meta has revealed that it's been working on a glove that will let the user feel sensations like holding an object. The glove has a number of sensors that measure the wearer's movements and air pockets across the glove surface inflate to create sensation. These gloves aren't quite ready for prime time yet, but they're an indicator of the kind of research that's going on behind the scenes. <clears throat> okay, so that's a pretty good primer. Basically, Metaverse is another shot at virtual reality. You know, I was talking to someone the other day about how virtual reality um, has had a number of false starts. So I'm a lifelong gamer, been around technology a long time. Uh, in the 90s, we were told, you know what? Uh, it's time for virtual reality now, and uh, it's going to be a big thing, and it wasn't. A decade later, virtual reality, it's time, it's going to be a big thing. It wasn't. Another decade, in the 2010s, it's time for virtual reality. It wasn't. So now, here we are again with 2022, and uh, the most arguably untrustworthy company on the planet is now telling us 
it's time for virtual reality. And you can forgive me for saying, yeah, probably not. <laughs> um, but this video does a good job of showing a couple of things. First of all, what maybe makes this a little bit different now, and I would say the only thing that makes it different, you know, it showed an office environment. I don't have any desire to have meetings in the metaverse. Um, there's all sorts of stuff that's not entertainment related. I, I don't, I don't understand why someone would want to spend time in the metaverse when they could just do it in real life with one exception. And that's people who have accessibility related challenges. And the initial research and traction that's been done so far has shown that for those folks who maybe have a physical handicap of some sort or have some, uh, um, area where, you know, maybe mobility is difficult or, um, you know, maybe they're, they're vision impaired or whatever it is. The metaverse can be very useful and it can be freeing and value added. And I can buy that. Okay. Now the question becomes, uh, what does that mean for everybody else? Um, I can see jumping into meetings. I'm willing to jump into a, a meeting or, uh, some sort of virtual bar or restaurant, you know, to accommodate people who have those sort of needs. But that's not what we're being sold. What we're being sold is the metaverse as this always on viable competitor to real life. And I don't see that at all. So uh, that's a huge problem, obviously. But regardless of how it shakes out, voice and AI is going to have a role to play because uh, for starters, you're going to need to authenticate yourself throughout the process and your voice uh, surely will be part of that. Um, you're obviously going to be communicating. The Oculus has got a uh, headphone built in uh, where you speak through it. Almost any VR or metaverse device will have that. So the question is, do you use your actual voice? Do you use a synthetic voice um, with avatars? Do you represent yourself? Um, or do you not? Uh, do you have an avatar that looks totally different? Um, and then being able to give voice commands is important because the interface is kind of cumbersome. You know, they're still working a lot of that out and it was evident in the video. So, you know, all in all, I'm not uh, sold on the hype with the metaverse. I'm uh, kind of cynical, unfortunately. Um, I need to have it proven first. Um, you know, I need to see some wins stacked up uh, before I become a believer. And maybe this is the time, but you know what? Uh, it's going to take more companies than Meta. I don't care what Facebook calls itself. Um, we need some different options. Um, to their credit, they've talked about interoperability. Uh, we'll see if they mean it. Uh, and in the meantime... Um, as far as I can tell, we've had two years of not that much physical contact with each other. Uh, so maybe that's where the investment needs to go. And maybe that's where a lot of the growth is going to be over the next couple of years. Uh, and then maybe, you know, we'll see where that leaves the metaverse. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm Bradley Metrock with This Week in Voice Daily.